What's up guys, obviously it's Captain Obvious, and welcome to the Armory. In today's episode, I'll be covering the MP443 and the M9 handguns. Of all the controversies in Battlefield, this is probably one of the biggest ones. People deciding which one of these handguns is the superior weapon. And I'm here to tell you guys, there really isn't too, too much different between these two weapons. Except for A, their look and feel, and B, a few minor differences which one weapon has over the other. I'm going to start by covering the MP443 and then move on to the M9 a little bit later in today's video. The MP443 is the one weapon I see that people always claim is better than the M9. And statistically, that is untrue. The M9 is statistically superior to the MP443. There are some things that are exactly the same about the two weapons, but some of the other things the M9 has the edge over the MP443 in. But... After playing with both of these weapons significantly for a good amount of time, I've come to realize that the MP443 just feels better. It has better iron sights, they're easier to use, the M9 just feels a whole lot bulkier. Now that does not affect how the weapon performs, how the weapon plays with, but I just feel like the MP443 just feels better in my hands because of that, the smaller compact nature of it, and the fact that the iron sights are a whole lot better than the M9. Being precise with these weapons is extremely important, but as is hip firing. So that's where the sort of differences between these two weapons comes in. Aiming on the sights with the MP443 is extremely effective. There is no difference between the spread of the MP443 and the M9 at all. But just, you know, look and feel wise, the MP443 has the superior sort of edge over the M9. The MP443's damage is 25 to 13.75 with a drop off beginning at 12 meters and ending at 50 meters for the unsuppressed version. For the suppressed version, the drop-off begins at 6 meters and ends at 40 meters. In core mode, your shots to kill are 4 to 8, and in hardcore mode, that drops down to 3 to 5. The maximum potential rate of fire is 400 rounds per minute. The suppressive effect is 7.0%. Muzzle velocity is 320 meters per second, and the maximum range is 480 meters. Besides the M1911, the MP443 statistics right here are the lowest in the semi-automatic pistol class. Both the muzzle velocity and maximum range are extremely low, meaning you can only use this pistol effectively at close to medium range. Do not even attempt to use it out past, let's say, you know, 45 meters, because that damage is going to be too low, and the muzzle velocity is too low to even pull off four consecutive shots, even if you get headshots. So always make sure you use this weapon at close to medium range, nowhere out past medium to long range. It's, it's not advisable, and you can barely get killed with this weapon. It's extremely hard to. Reload times are extremely fast at 1.35 seconds on normal and 1.60 seconds on empty. Threshold reload time is 1.0125 seconds. And on empty, that is 1.2 seconds. Multiplier is 0.75, but the reload time on this weapon is extremely fast. So you really don't have to worry about finding a nice place to reload because you can do it in a split second. And it's very effective, as a matter of fact. You can get a lot of shots off in a very short amount of time. Recoil patterns for pistols are an extremely complicated thing. Their vertical recoil is actually higher than all the LMGs at 0.7, but they also have a very fast recenter speed, meaning that you're very controllable in your recoil patterns. So when looking at the MP443, it has a very high vertical recoil as long as you pull the trigger extremely fast. Hip fire spread is very manageable, but if you pull the trigger, like I said, very fast, it gets a very unbearable levels in which I do not ever recommend doing that. There are only a few minor changes between the suppressed and the unsuppressed versions of the MP443. Vertical recoil on the suppressed version is less than it is on the unsuppressed version. Your ADS spread is actually lower on the suppressed version than it is for the unsuppressed version. Your hip fire spread is what changes mainly. When taking a look at the hip fire spread of the unsuppressed version, it is actually a little bit less than it is of the suppressed version. So hip fire when using the unsuppressed and aim down the sights when using the suppressed version for better control and accuracy. The magazine size is 17 rounds plus one in the chamber. It's a very nice magazine size. It's very good for a pistol and you can get a lot of kills in with just one magazine and make sure you hit all your shots because you know, wasting bullets with a 17 round magazine is not that great because it's still low compared to some of the other weapons. Let's move on to covering the M9. I'll compare these two weapons at the very end after looking at the M9 statistics. It will not take too, too long because they are very similar to each other. 
The M9 is basically the same exact thing as the MP443, except for a few minor changes, which gives it the edge of the MP443 statistically. But like I said before, look and feel wise, I like the MP443 better. The damage on this weapon is 25 to 13.75, with the drop off beginning at 12 meters and ending at 50 meters. The suppressed version is 6 to 40 meters. Shots to kill in core mode are 4 to 8, and that drops down to 3 to 5 shots to kill in hardcore mode. The rate of fire is 400 rounds per minute with a suppressive effect of 7.0%. Muzzle velocity is 380 meters per second and the maximum range is 570 meters. This is where the advantage of the M9 over the MP443 comes into play. The muzzle velocity and the maximum range are both higher than the MP443. The reload speeds are exactly the same at 1.35 seconds on normal and 1.60 seconds on empty. Threshold cancel time reloads are 1.0125 seconds and 1.2 seconds respectively. Just like the MP443, it's an extremely fast reload speed, and it's great at close range. It can save your ass a lot of the time. The M9's recoil patterns and spread values are exactly the same as the MP443, so there's no need for me to go over them again and just, you know, be redundant. So if you want to see them again, go back to the earlier parts of this video, but it's really not necessary because you already saw it. But if you really want to, go on back. The magazine size is a little bit lower than the MP443's at 15 rounds plus one in the chamber, and it's not that big of a deal, but it's still an advantage the MP443 has over the M9, but most of the cases, it will not make a difference. But sometimes it will, and it will save your ass a few times to have that larger magazine that the MP443 has. Alright, so let me break it down to you guys. Statistically, the M9 is superior to the MP443 because of that increased muzzle velocity and range. You can effectively use the M9 at a little bit longer range than the MP443, but in reality, it does not affect you too, too much because you will not be using pistols out past medium range. The MP443 feels and looks a lot better than the M9. It's just a little bit more compact and it feels more like a pistol in my hands because of those better iron sights. It's easier to aim and the M9 just feels a little bulky making it a little less attractive to a player like me where I care about how the weapon feels. I like making sure that the weapon just performs well under a lot of circumstances and those iron sights are a great thing to have on the MP443, allowing for a little bit more precision, especially with that suppressor. Using the suppressor on the MP443 is not that bad of an option because of the easier precision you can have with those better iron sights and the fact that the suppressor increases your aim down sights accuracy by lowering the spread. So this is it. If you want to use a weapon at a little bit longer ranges, the M9 is your weapon of choice because of that increased muzzle velocity. If you don't care about effective long range use, the MP443 is your go-to weapon because of that increased magazine size and the fact that it's a little bit more precise and it just feels better in my opinion. Alright, so that's it for today's episode of the Armory. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. It helps out a lot. Next episode, I will hopefully be start to cover the close quarter weaponry, but I cannot make any promises because I do not know when I will have all this stuff unlocked because I get the DLC pack next Tuesday and it may take me a little bit to unlock all the weapons. I plan on starting with the assault rifles, but if I do not get that started, I'll be to cover the carbines for the regular Battlefield 3 game, excluding close quarters. Remember, if you guys enjoyed the video, to give it a thumbs up, that helps out a lot. Remember to follow me on Twitter, the link is down in the description. And as always, rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.